find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. But I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail dog set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Feeding for the taste of the fly. Six, six, six. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 39, uh, ready to talk indie wrestling. I'm Mike Sorg, uh, at Sorgatron on the Twitter, a video production up here in the Pittsburgh area with some uh, wrestling promotions uh, with Sorgatron Media, with uh, IWC, with RWA, uh, all kinds of stuff. And uh, my compatriot on the line with me, as usual, from somewhere in Texas, you're in San Antonio. You're in San Antonio. San Antonio I know yes. that. I've been investigating other Texas towns because of other reasons. And I was like, <laughs> which one is he from? As in, like, I, I'm like, do you know Frisco, Texas? I've heard of Frisco, Texas. Well, I'm, I'm not sure exactly where they're that putting would be. In a, they're putting that again off topic already. There's a video game <laughs> museum going in Frisco, Texas. And I'm like, how far is that from Eamon? Can he get us a report? I'll have to, <laughs> I'll have to map quest it. I'll have to see. I think it's outside of Austin, if I recall. And now I know Austin is north oh, of yeah. you. I'm starting to get the geography of Texas now. So when you're, you know, I get this now, you know, context yes. is key. Uh, but of course, he's the announcer with Inspire Pro down there in Texas. NWA Inspire Pro, great things coming up with them. Uh in Chikara, actually. So go check that out. Inspire Pro Wrestling. Or Inspire Yeah, InspireProWrestling.com. I know yep. that. I know this. Yep. I know your stuff. <laughs> He's also at Amen2, please, on the Twitters. Um and uh please, you know, uh a big thanks to Basic Sickness, basicsickness.com for our intro, outro music. Uh check out free music and videos and more over there. Uh you can check us out, of course, at wrestlingmayhemshow.com for all of your indie mayhem show needs and as well as other wrestling things. Guys, we have so many shows going on right now, it's ridiculous. Um <laughs> there's a game show these Yahoo's started on Thursday night that you can get to at uh, wrestlinggameshow.com now. Um I love it. I love it. It's entertaining as hell. I've been getting into it. Um you can also drop us a line at good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com or on the hotline at uh, 412-206-WMS0. You can subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, YouTube, video and audio formats, and all the stuff of course at the Wrestling Mayhem Show Super Feed on iTunes and Stitcher if you want to do it that way. Um, and you can uh, uh, also reach out to us on Twitter at Mayhem Show, uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook, Google+, and the Great Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, Facebook group. And of course we do this uh, about every Tuesday night at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 p.m. Central, if my math is right, for Eamon. Uh, <laughs> 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 so, uh, uh, Eamon, uh, do you know it's 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 National Podcasting Day here? I, I heard it's National Podcasting Day. I understand Day. it is National Podcasting Day. Uh, we talked to actually one of the creators of it over on the Awesome Cast. You can go check that out, awesomecast.net, uh, or on the YouTube by itself uh, from a couple weeks ago. Uh, but it's a day to uh, celebrate podcasting, let other people get to know podcasting. I feel one part. I like to do is use my podcast to let other people know about other podcasts uh, <laughs> in, in, in that kind of spirit of, hey, we're all kind of all grassroots. We're all in this together. We've had a lot of great discussions about it uh, across Awesome Cast and Wrestling Mayhem Show on our recordings here uh, tonight. Please go check them out here through the week over at SorgatronMedia.com. Um, so I, I ran into this guy uh, back at the, the DBI 3 um, the Dust Batdorf Invitational Three, the third one, um, and uh, we we started talking about his podcast, which sounded a little bit like what we do here, Eamon. And I thought we got to get him on here sooner or later, and I thought that was the perfect time to do it. Michael McCormick is joining us on the line. How you doing, sir? Great. You guys sound like you're really busy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do stuff. We do things. We do things. Now, uh, uh, Michael, you're not only a podcaster. Uh, tell us what you do in, in the world of pro wrestling. Uh, I do announcing and then uh, basically whatever other random things. You guys know how this works. The promoters just say, hey, we need a gopher to do that. <laughs> it's a very glamorous life. Oh, it is. It is, especially with indie wrestling. Um, I definitely want to get into the announcing, get into the podcasting a little bit here. Uh, but first, as we like to start these off, you know, ideally you're into this because you're into pro wrestling, right? Um, so I, I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. We'll find out. Uh, uh, tell us, like, what was kind of the first thing that got you into kind of pro wrestling in general? Well, I was pretty mad when I found out it wasn't cricket. <laughs> uh, it's just one of those things. It, just like everybody else as a kid, you have uh, – I had an uncle and, you know, my cousins were all 
probably four or five years older than me and all into pro wrestling. And uh, the one that I always remember is sort of a point to go back to is what a lot of kids will probably have is WrestleMania six with Hulk Hogan and mm-hmm. the ultimate warrior, which ironically, now that I understand a little bit about how, uh, quote, the business works, I hate that match. But <laughs> to a little kid, it was the greatest thing I've ever seen. And, and, you know, I, I have I have a similar-ish problem with Hulk Hogan matches, but I tend to look at them, I when I go, I've been watching a lot of main events lately, like the old 80s ones, right? And I try to look at Hulk Hogan in the eyes. That's all it cost me $9.99. It cost me nine ninety nine. That's right. Why not? Um, but I try to look at Hulk Hogan in the eyes I did when I was like, you know, seven, eight years old at the time. You know. Um, but I mean, do, 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 do you do you kind of drop into that mode, or is it just like you just see the glaring, like, oh. No. Well, first, do you have to have a couple drinks to get into that mode? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't, unfortunately. Uh, um, but I never grew up. Um, and it's such a weird thing because progression wise, um. I, obviously, I watch matches for a different reason now. I look at them as um, I watch a lot of indie DVDs for research on guys that uh, we might be using. But it's so weird because my progression went from being a huge Ultimate Warrior fan to Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. And mm-hmm. Shawn Michaels, Christopher Daniels, AJ Styles, those are all guys that I watched. And it was just like, OK, I have to find a way to be a part of this. And with doing play-by-play in sports in my, I guess, real life, um, it just sort of came naturally. And by come naturally, I mean, is a lot of work because there's no, it's not like wrestling school where there's a, a lot of places you can go and learn, hey, here's how you do your craft. You either pick it up or you don't. I, I, now, so how much did it help you? I, I, just to be clear, what, what, what kind of sports announcing are you doing? Um, pretty much you name it, football, basketball, soccer, baseball. Um, I can't even think we've done so many random things over the years Mm -hmm. with the TV and radio stations that I've worked at. And it also helps too, because from like 21 to probably 30, I worked at a, in a production studio at a TV station. So it helps me understand, uh, shots and things like that. Nice, nice. Um, it, 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 what are the differences that you find uh, going from the sports announcing to pro wrestling in particular? I I struggled a lot, I'll be honest with you, at first, because especially coming from predominantly doing football, it's so different. And I didn't understand until uh, a couple of guys sat me down and said, you have to let it come to you and let it breathe a little bit because – you're looking at it from a football perspective of, okay, it's first and 10. They picked up three yards. You know that there's another thing coming Mm -hmm. as opposed to, Hey, don't go too far down the line. Now you might be familiar with these guys, but if you get too far ahead of the story, you know, like if you watch a Shawn Michaels come back, okay, there's a scoop slam. Well, you know that the elbow drop is coming and then the super kick. But if you go too far ahead of that, you know, you're, you're giving away part of it. And we've always, I've been told things I've picked up that it's a story in which say it's a one-on-one match. There are five guys telling one story, the two guys that are working each other, the referee and the two announcers. Now, if one of the five of you aren't necessarily on the same page, you're going to be able to tell when you watch it back and, and people are going to say, well, that didn't really work for me. Mm-hmm. So it's it's been a real steep learning curve, mm-hmm. and, and it often seems, uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, you know, we can look at a lot of things on YouTube, and we've had the conversations about the the significance of announcers, of referees, uh, um, over over these these shows. Um, it, it definitely kind of shows it's not just the guys in the ring. Um, I mean, you can have a great AJ Styles, you know. And whoever match right, but but if there there's a couple you know uh, you know guys that have no idea what they're doing, it can definitely bring that down. Yeah, and it's one of those things too, where you know it's you each have a little paintbrush and you're trying to help paint the same picture. Mm-hmm. If you know the the action in the ring is amazing, and you're talking about you know hot dogs and <laughs> cherry pie or whatever, <laughs> it's just not going to make any sense. And I think that's why. And it goes back to it's one of those things where everybody always complains about Monday Night Raw. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Monday Night Raw is 
the staple, you know, the, and what I guess people don't realize is, is they have microphones and then they have earpieces. And I've learned it is really hard to keep a train of thought sometimes about a match and have someone yelling, hey, say this in your ear. Mm-hmm. I, I really don't think those guys get enough credit for the good things that they do because storytelling is one of the hardest things to do at times. Because you have to realize if you're not into the match and you don't make it to every single match sound like it's the greatest thing ever. Even back to, if you remember, uh, Al Snow and the Big Boss Man in the Kettle from Hell match. Go back and watch it and just listen to the announcers and tell me that they don't make that sound like the greatest thing ever. Now, we know it's not, but still. And it's really funny because now you, you it feels like you do have a little bit of you know not to dig at the guys on the on the main tv now but they do kind of dig at the thing in front of them on tv you know i guess classic example is what happened with michael cole in nxt for like was the season season three or four where he was basically i guess he was the heel at the time but um but even just generally they're like what the hell are we watching you know <laughs> and i don't know if that's just a we're doing this three hours every monday oh my god <laughs> kind of thing I think it's one of those things where at some point you kind of, for them probably, they try and rebel. Kind of mm-hmm. like, haha, look, at the end of the day, you can yell at me all you want, but I can still say whatever I want. Yeah. And I, I, at I, some point you do things so often you've got to amuse yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, it's, it feels like it's to the detriment of, of the work that is going in in the ring. Right. So certainly, certainly. And, uh, that's, and that's where, too, the first thing that I was always told was, your job is to put the guys in the ring over, not put yourself over. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't get that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, Eamon, I, Eamon, you just kind of got thrown into this, right? <laughs> well, yeah, it, it was very much a, a sort of a throw in sort of scenario, but I, I definitely can see a lot of the stuff like, like, you, you know, I, I like going back to like this stuff on TV. Like I can't even imagine like commentating a match with somebody in my ear telling me what to say. Um, you know, it, you sort of take, I guess, maybe that freedom and, and, and that ability um, to, you know, not be, you know, sort of talked into for granted in, in those aspects. So I, yeah, I definitely, I definitely see the, see those aspects from, you know, just the small time that I've been working. Well, and it's another thing too about, it's so very odd to, uh, like I said, there's no school. So you're kind of like trying mm-hmm. to teach yourself how to be a character. And I think back to the football thing, that was the thing transitioning from sports that I had the most uh, problem understanding was, hey, okay, you're getting this across, but you have to do it in such a way that it's you, but it's not. And for anybody right. who's you know, even remotely around wrestling, that will make more sense. Yeah, definitely. Certainly. So, um, again, another reason we have on here is the podcast. Uh, Tales from the Indies. You guys have been doing this uh, 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 majority of this year here. What made you decide to venture into the podcast world in in this uh, side of things? Well, it's kind of funny because it's the exact same thing where it's still kind of like a performance in a way. And uh, Ripper Blackheart, who's my partner on that and has been – taught me tremendous amounts on how to be a character is also my uh, foil, so to speak, with war wrestling and has been for, uh, I think we're on year seven or eight, if I remember right. So it was just one of those things where it was a natural fit. And we have all these guys who, um, if you listen to the course of these, uh, Jock Sampson, the Scarbonis, and are a big part of the very first one. And it was just something we talked about for a long time about sitting down with our buddies and just, Hey, whatever comes out, comes out. Mm. And, you know, it just kind of came out and we've been very fortunate to have some guys that, um, I respect a whole hell of a lot. Like we had AJ styles, uh, which is the, an episode that I'm very proud of. And it's also a very interesting episode because he's selling merchandise while we're doing the episode. <laughs> <laughs> It, oh. And I see, is this like at a con or something? Because I see the picture of you, you with them and, and you can kind of see all that stuff around. Actually, it was at an HWA show. Okay. 
um, in Middletown, Ohio. And, uh, you know, he did a seminar there earlier in the day and had a handful of the wrestlers on the show. And then we just asked him, hey, you know, we would love to sit down and talk to you about your career. And um, it was a week before he went and won the IWGP title. Mm -hmm. So we talk a little bit about that, but it, it wasn't traditional in the fact that he's like, okay, but I, you know, you guys need to know, I need to make money to, uh, to make my way. And he talked about a couple weeks ago on a different podcast that he's making significantly more money now on the Indies than he was in TNA. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> while he's sitting there selling merch, we just sat down, handed him a microphone and, uh, went back and forth and when somebody would come up and want to buy something we sort of would talk amongst ourselves and uh, my favorite part of it is about halfway through his opponent for the night who is um, a guy named Jamin Olivencia who's in OVW and has been the TV champ multiple times he he comes up and grabs a microphone and, and starts doing a bit about you know why we're not interviewing him and why we're interviewing AJ Styles <laughs> and it, it helped that night because it, it gave me a bigger understanding of what they were going to do in the ring that night. And I think that match is fantastic. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so, I mean, again, is this your first, this is your first podcast or have you done anything with the sports uh, affiliations? Um, it is and it isn't. I mean, it kind of had like some loose ones with, different people but it's the first one i can say that i started by myself um with using context from the wrestling world and uh, i have another one with uh some of my buddies that's kind of a oh man i don't even know how to describe it uh general randomness <laughs> <laughs> well that's how, that's how we started doing this stuff too <laughs> uh, this is uh yeah it, it borderlines on maybe we shouldn't be doing this at times uh, it's called the Hoodie Free Hour, and it's it's I tell you, it's a lot different from Tales from the Indies. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. So I mean, I, I guess that's that's really the high point there uh, of uh, with AJ Styles, and, and the most. And I, I love that there's a story around it too. Um, and what was your? I mean. You know, we, we we talked a lot on the Wrestling Mayhem show before this tonight about well, what's going on in in uh, uh, wrestling podcasting. I guess you know we have a lot of fan casts, we have a lot of wrestler casts. Um, you know, with our Stone Colds and our Cole Cabanas. Um, or where, where do you see kind of your place for your show in, in between there? Well, I think you know the inspiration was I do a lot of traveling for broadcasting, and I drive to Cleveland a lot and to Cincinnati and Columbus and. I, I'm one of those guys who, you know, i grown up, I love Chris Jericho. I love uh, Steve Austin and all the, and JR and all those guys. And I started listening to it and I thought, man, you know, we could totally do this. And, but we've got to figure out a hook because, you know, we're not Colt Cabana or, mm -hmm. you know, any of those guys. And the thing that we figured out, Hey, this is kind of for us with people that know us is it's done in character as far as wrestling mm -hmm. so when guys come on they can be however they want but you know you're not going to get myself you're going to get sort of alter egos of uh ripper blackheart and myself so it's it's kind of like if we did it live at a show which we've been fortunate enough that promoters have come to us and liked what we were doing and let us do these live at their shows and because of that, we've gotten to get some really great guests. Mm -hmm. But I, I think there's a place for everything. I mean, you know, that's why I say we tried to be different because, you know, everybody's going to interview AJ Styles. And a lot of people will ask him the exact same questions. And it's kind of hard not to if you don't listen to every single podcast out there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for us, it was like, OK, well, we can do that. But while he's talking, we can have Ripper take a shot at him. <laughs> you know and then him him uh there's a little playful moment where basically he threatens to slap him out of his chair you know i i can't tell you any other podcasts that i've listened to where you're gonna have one guest threaten the or threaten one of the hosts <laughs> and i can tell you that it wasn't just uh ripper myself i've also been um <laughs> 
kind of threatened to be slapped by a couple of the uh, heels that we've had on the show. <laughs> Jock Sampson threatened to slap the crap out of me, so... It sounds like Jack Sampson. But if you know Jock <laughs> Sampson, he's threatened to slap the shit out of everybody. <laughs> yes, so, yes. I mean, that's that's not really... But yeah, it's if you get past the first one, the first one is kind of insane. We we, we may not have picked the greatest night to uh, to do that. The night he won the War Wrestling Championship, uh, the Scarbonis defended their titles, uh, and we may or may not, probably may, have been um, kicked out of an establishment in Lima before that. <laughs> You know, so, but it's one of those things where I think it's, it's kind of the last remaining uh, thread of kayfabe. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, for whatever you think that that is right now. Yeah. But it's a lot of fun. And I, I, I absolutely love the days that we get to do those. And I think we've got a couple of more coming up because we've got a show, uh, not this coming Saturday night, but next Saturday night, the 11th. And it's the return to the UAW Hall in Lima. And I think there's going to be a lot of insane things that get done that day. <laughs> nice. Do you find it's tough to get it done around shows like that? Because I, I know for me, like, we've we've experimented with. I'm like I'm around these wrestlers like like twice a month, and like I I, I have no room you know, for me because I I'm, I'm going I'm I'm setting up stuff I'm doing the show the the entire way through and then breaking down and. Uh, and just had just hasn't worked out for me. Like, and you're another guy that you're there through the entire bulk of the show itself, doing your announcing, of course. Um, is it kind of hard to uh, get them, you know, get them in there around that? Um, honestly, it depends on the show because mm -hmm. if it's, uh, for instance, if it's war, it's it's a little easier because we know the setup and um, you know we've been able to get lucky to where, say, the guys will come in the night before or. Uh, hang around later that night so we can do it after the show, which is both a blessing and a curse at times because it just depends on how well the show went and how well the after party went. Um, but, uh, you know, HWA is great because um, the promoter there is is more than helpful with us. And we just go in a little early, uh, wait till the guys get there and set up. And, you know, he says, hey, have at it. And we've gotten... Uh, a couple of great guests that way. The one really that was the biggest um, problem and we didn't really get it taped how we wanted to was this year with the DBI. Uh, and that's because the DBI is, I mean, you guys have talked about it. It's such a different animal mm -hmm. with having the, you know, the entire show is, is kind of like an all-star game in a way because you get a lot of guys in the state of Ohio who, uh, because of whatever you want to call it, conflicts with different promotions, you know, A doesn't like B and so on, that aren't always together. But that show is also so different because it's a charity show. Everybody's there providing their time. And, you know, everybody wants to get their stuff in. But it's also one of the best nights of the year for me because not only is it charity, but also I get to work with a different person every single match. So I, I kind of look at it from year to year as, okay, have I improved to where I can do this with no problem? And OCW was another one too, where we got to talk to uh, the promoter and Jeff Cannon and uh, the, what's their name? The party crashers, Jimmy Shane and Juice Jennings. And it was a blast. The biggest mistake I learned though, is never record one while you're driving back from West Virginia and you're in the car. <laughs> <laughs> what what would be the problem? <laughs> well Wait, are I'll you driving? You. No, I was not driving. Sherman Tank was driving. Um it was uh myself and the Hall of Fame City Hitman, which was uh Sherman Tank, Joey Vengeance, Jimmy Shane, and Juice Jennings. Uh, we're working a show called APWA in Shinston, West Virginia. The episode itself is very amusing, <laughs> but uh, I believe it's 12 or 13 in the series. But uh, it presented its own challenges because 
we were so slap happy by the end of three shows in two days that, um, uh, and if nothing else, if you listen to this episode, it's the hotel trip from hell. Uh, Tank actually slept in a door in front, or I'm sorry, in a chair in front of the door. And if you've seen Sherman Tank, he's about 350 pounds. Big dude. So uh, he actually ends up saying the hell with us at one point at apparently like 3.30 in the morning. And he goes and sleeps in his car. Now, think about that for a second. He actually thinks that his car is a safer option for him than sleeping with all of us in this hotel room that I don't know that, you know, didn't have three murders there the day before. <laughs> so, you know, it's one of those things where we, the, my goal for that episode was, is that we tried to illustrate for anyone who had never been what being on a wrestling road trip is like. And the episode encapsulates every second of that because it really is complete randomness. So there's a couple of stories where someone will start to tell a story and then you'll hear a different story. But it's not the greatest episode in terms of you're not going to learn anything about the business that you didn't already know except for, hey, this is really how it goes. And I think we cut out the uh, the adult store that we made a trip to. <laughs> I don't think that made the final edit. Wow. Wow. But it had a whole other story behind it, too. <laughs> it's definitely... Um, I, I, uh, I ended up on a road trip. Like a few road trips. Uh, but one in particular, I remember turning to the one guy that I knew had done this, uh, been at this for a few years. And I was like, is, because I mean, I, I kind of stay away from it. I'm kind of with my own production crew and everything, uh, and mostly independent, uh, for the most part. Um, but I, I just turned to him and I was like, is this really what it's like most of the time for you? He's like, yeah, basically. And that's the thing is things that you think are insane are normal. Yeah. I mean, I end up with them at a Sheets gas station, and I don't even remember where the hell we were at. And just the random people that came up to them, and I mean, we were 65 miles from where the show was. And it just, the things that happen, and the people come up and say to them, or that you go through during the course of a road trip are just... Uh, they're insane. And like I said, I, I firmly believe that a, that might've been a mistake and two, that uh, it makes for a great lesson, if nothing else. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, on that note, Hey, uh, one question we like to ask, it's going to be about podcasting, about indie wrestling. I guess that all kind of uh, wraps together. What's the best and worst thing about uh, working on indie wrestling so far for you? The worst thing working with indie wrestlers. <laughs> Oh. Uh, I mean, you know, you always get one, a handful of guys that, you know, and, and I'm myself, as far as preparation, I'm beyond anal. Um, you know, I'll, I'll go and I'll have three pages on just one guy for a show just because, uh, you know, you never know what kind of situations are going to come up through the course of a show where you can say, oh, hey, he blah, blah, blah. But, a lot of guys, and I think this goes back to character development or lack thereof, um, don't necessarily get it. And my thing has always been, well, if you don't get your character, then how do I put you over so that someone else gets it? You know, and, and if you don't exist on the Internet, well, how am I supposed to find stuff on you. And then I ask you and you give me this dead look. uh, (laughs) Nobody's ever asked me that. Okay. What's your finish called? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Well, what is it? Oh, pile driver. (laughs) Okay. Your name's John, the fireman. You don't, it's not, you know, the burning building or something. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Okay. Well, again, if you don't put it into your character, why, why do people care? Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, and you can tell the difference between good indie wrestling and bad indie wrestling. 
and a lot of those guys are working. I hate to say this, but there's a big thing right now amongst uh, promoters and wrestlers that I know about guys working for free. And, Mm -hmm. you know, one of the first things I guess that you're told when you train is never work for free, except for that promoter that trained you, because that's, you know, that's a different kind of relationship. And and in a way I, I thank big Tom of of war wrestling for that all the time, because he's the guy that gave me a shot and said, all right, I know you can do this. Mm -hmm. And the best thing is I have gotten to meet so many awesome people in my life, people that I am, you know, such a huge fan of. And, uh, AJ Styles is one. Uh, I got to sit down and talk to uh, Joe Dombrowski, who ran a handful of promotions in Cleveland. He ran CAPW and PWO, and then runs um, the one in uh, Pittsburgh, which I can never remember. Uh, the name PWX, of. he's involved with. He's not actually well. He, he's not really or running. Was involved with. However, you want. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> now he's involved with IWC and PWX in, in different the one capacities. I was saying, trying to think of was IWC. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, and then you know, so many guys like. Uh, one of my favorite uh, stories is there's a guy named John Moxley <laughs> who, uh, I mean, I don't know what he's doing now. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, hopefully he's doing guys, okay. <laughs> have you guys seen him recently? I don't know. I, I don't know. He was in IWC for a minute and I just did not like the guy. <laughs> uh, you know, it's so funny though. It's funny that you say it like that because there are people who I have actually heard say that about him where people, there's not really a, eh, okay. Kind of thing about him. You either really liked him or you didn't get him yeah. as far mm-hmm. as working with him. And I remember when he was 19 years old, I, I, and again, it goes back to that. I'm beyond blessed to be doing what I do. I sat next to him in a locker room in Lima. And I just remember thinking like, man, like this guy, you just sit next to him. And you just know he's it. Mm-hmm. However you quantify it is that guy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, then ultimately he, uh, he had, I think around 10 matches in war that were all just phenomenal. And, and for me to get to say, like, I called that guy's matches, you know, even one time, it just, it still blows me away. And, you know, he's, he's done pretty well for himself after, you know, Puerto <laughs> Rico and every, he thought he might quit and all that, you know, and, uh, and even down to, I, I the guy who trained him is one of my favorite wrestlers and people in the Indies is a guy named Cody Hawk, who I cannot say enough wonderful things about. And if, you know, you have somebody in the Ohio area who wants to get trained and they don't get trained by Cody Hawk. I don't know what to tell you because the guy makes stars. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got uh, Haley Hatred that's in Japan. Uh, Sean Sean Ricker who was on uh, the Hero with the Rock and then had an NXT deal for a while. Um, the guy just you know it's those kind of guys who being around them makes me, I guess, recharged enough to stay and keep doing shows through all the bad things. Mm-hmm. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, we had him for a second, and it was a weird tag team. He dropped in. I had no idea who he was. It was not a good situation. So <laughs> that's yeah, awesome. That's what I've heard is a lot of people, you know, have had because, like most guys should do, pour mm-hmm. yourselves out everywhere you can. Yeah, and yeah. He got into some weird situations, and that's where I, I think I've heard most of the people who. I guess had a negative experience with. Yeah. Him, oh, and it's nothing like 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 personally or anything like that. It was just like he was put in like a, a tag match with Sammy Callahan. I don't know what he's doing now either. Um, with like Delirious <laughs> and Daisy. To debut on TV. What's that? Waiting to re-debut on. TV. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but uh, against like uh, Delirious and Daisy Hayes in like a odd stalkerish mixed tag thing, and it was just it was just a weird angle, and I didn't know who this John Moxley guy was, and just it didn't. At least my experience, uh, you know, watching him in there ringside camera in IWC was just like I, I don't get I don't get it. But again, never seeing uh, fantastic things right. he did in Ohio CZW. Wrong place, wrong time. Exactly, exactly. So, but unfortunately, then I was just like, well, who the hell was this guy? You know, and every oh, time and- his name came up, I was I was unfortunately you know colored by that uh situation and that's where too i think uh as it just as a for instance goes back to the war thing um being a fan where i went to my first show and i never really got the indies to be honest with you growing up 
Mm-hmm. We always support wrestling in GWA and WWWA here. And I never really got it. Um, but I think that was because I wasn't around a lot of people who I guess were into that area. And uh, my buddy, Peachy Rodriguez, who's a, a referee, you know, I got to hang around him and got to go on the shows and war had another guy named Tyler black, <laughs> who I guess is doing all right. Because last night when he destroyed John Cena, he got a thank you chant. <laughs> which is weird by itself, but I mean, that's Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, so it's just one of those things where I don't think people understand enough that your future stars of tomorrow are on indie wrestling right now. You know, and WB is doing a fantastic job of snatching all those guys up, you know, uh, Kenta, Kevin Steen, uh, Sammy, you know, John Moxley, Tyler Black, all those guys. There's one I'm forgetting. Who am I forgetting? Oh, uh, Prince Devitt. Yeah. Mm. You know, all those guys are fantastic, but I don't think, you know, people realize, hey, these guys are in your backyard right now. The guys you're going to see on WWE in five, ten years are working right now. And that's where uh, a lot of the guys that I've talked about, you know, are just fantastic. And I really hope that people start going to support good indie wrestling. Mm -hmm. So you never know. You never know. My my wife still squeezes a little bit every time Cesaro comes out because she remembers. I remember meeting him in IWC and you know, uh, or seeing him in the ring or something. You know, um, mm-hmm. it, it, it's really good. It, it, it feels like we're at a point for at least you know the few have been you know uh, into wrestling, into indie wrestling, or involved in indie wrestling for the last ten years are seeing our guys make it. You know, right? Even uh, that punk guy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> His, his promo, his I'm not holding microphone promo is still my favorite wrestling promo. <laughs> <laughs> and if you haven't seen it, go to YouTube and look up. I'm not even holding a microphone. CM Punk. I believe it was IWA Mid-South back when uh, they didn't have near as much heat on them, we'll say. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Awesome, awesome. Uh, Michael McCormick, it's Tales from the Indies is his podcast. Please uh, go look it up wherever you do your podcast. Hey, just Google search it. You'll find all the all the oh, links I right do. there. Make sure you don't click on Tales from the West Indies. That is something a little bit different. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot be responsible for what happens if you do. <laughs> Anywhere else people can find out what you're doing, anything coming up you want to plug, now is your time. Uh, Twitter, it's uh, at McCormickPBP. We've got the Tales from Indies, uh, it's on iTunes and Podcast Garden, uh, Facebook, which is Tales from the Indies after the Facebook. And uh, next weekend, the 11th, we got a show. What is that show called? Blood, Sweat, and Fears 4 in Lima, Ohio. It's at uh, the UAW Hall right off 75, if you can get through Lima with all the traffic that they've got going on there. <laughs> uh, fantastic lineup. And if you have not been in the to an indie show i challenge you to come to this one if you're anywhere near lima there are people that drive from eight or nine hours away to come to these shows uh talent from all over the midwest and a little bit of a spin the wheel sort of deal the entire uh night is based on the spin the wheel make the deal match where uh every there are 18 names on the wheel and you'll have nine matches and you don't know who the matches are going to be. And it's for a new belt that we're bringing back called the respect title. Well, again, you could, you could have, you know, two good guys or two bad guys or however you look at it. Mm-hmm. And also uh, Jock Sampson will be there because <laughs> he's the champ and, you know, he's pissed that he can't get two belts, but his cousin, uh, Vernal Lee Sampson will be there. That guy's a monster. And uh, the 18th, a show in Reading, Ohio for HWA, which features the longest reigning HWA champion of all time and a guy I'm a huge fan of. And he got screwed over at the last show back in July in Chance Profit. <laughs> that guy, he can't be imitated. He can't be duplicated. There's only one of him. Awesome. 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 Thanks, Mike McCormick. Check him out on uh, Tales from the Indies. And uh, we're going to actually talk about a little bit more indie wrestling. Absolutely, Sorg. And, and speaking of, of indie wrestling, I know uh, 
Uh, you went to an indie show this weekend, but you weren't the only one that actually went to that indie show. We actually have a special guest on the line currently uh, to also talk about that. Uh, he is our good friend in the mainstream media, if you check out uh, our Wrestling Mayhem show. Uh, and like I said, very good friend the, of the whole Mayhem show community, and that's Matt Carlin. Matt, how are you doing this evening? What's up, Eamon? I feel like I'm crossing enemy lines. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, we're never letting you back over to the other show. Um <laughs> But yeah, uh, you and Sorg uh, both attended uh, Ring of Honor Wrestling in Wheeling, Rest- Wheeling West Virginia. Uh, say that three times fast uh, this weekend. So uh, d- uh, tell me uh, how this experience was. Was this your first Ring of Honor event? My very first Ring of Honor show. And so, um, so I'm automatically very curious because I, I, I I'm interested to see what a first timer thinks. And now you and you're familiar with the show. You you were watching the Ring of Honor television leading uh-huh. up to this, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I you know I dabble. <laughs> you know, I, I I try to catch their television show whenever it's running on the weekends here in Pittsburgh. But this is my first time being at the the actual live event, and it was really interesting to go to. It was a really awesome show. I like going to these shows. I kind of had the same. Um, kind of mindset whenever I went and I, when I went to see the NXT taping in Orlando uh, mm. over the summer, I'm like, my, my mindset becomes, you know, I'm going to see the greatest indie show I've ever been to in my life. And uh, that worked at the NXT taping and it worked at the Ring of Honor taping because it really is. It's like the best indie wrestling show you could imagine. <laughs> Just awesome stuff. Awesome. Uh, and and uh, this is not my first outing with ring of honor and, and, and to the point where I have not watched the probably haven't watched the TV show in like a year, but I will every time I see that they're coming within apparently an hour radius <laughs> since this, it was wheeling West Virginia, which is like uh, just over an hour away from us. Uh, it, but it was worth coming. Uh, it, you know, of course the main event, or at least the only real announced uh, match of the whole thing. Uh, they taped four episodes. Um, uh, had a, a honor honor battle royal. Had a championship episode, or every title was defended. That was really mm-hmm. good. Uh, great matches uh, up and down the card. Uh, there was a, you know a couple of weird filler ones. Who is this cheeseburger guy? First of all, <laughs> oh no. cheeseburger, <laughs> cheeseburger. Um, everyone else seemed to know who he was, and uh, he, I, he I was, know I've uh, seen him before, but just a back, uh, quick background on cheeseburger from what I understand of the story. Uh, he was a like sort of traveling with Ring of Honor, uh, like security guard like person. Like he would, he would basically be there like collect streamers or whatever. But I believe he was also training with Ring of Honor, uh, and he was sort of like the dorky kid everyone picked on. And I he somehow got the nickname Cheeseburger. And then there was like a Ring of Honor event at some point in time where he made out with uh, Maria Canellis, and that sort of like <laughs> made him like the new like popular guy. And now he and now he's wrestling, and now he's and now he's Cheeseburger. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, but of course, I, I, go ahead. But you know what, Sorg? You gotta have the uh, you gotta have a guy like Cheeseburger on your wrestling show, especially if you're Ring of Honor, which I'm sure even for me on the outside looking in, when I think of like Ring of Honor, I'm thinking like the very serious wrestling show. This is the this is the show for the real fans, you know. Yeah, and I know I know going I into it, see someone like Cheeseburger on this show, it's so refreshing. It's just like it, it's a it's it, it just kind of refreshes your mind for the other stuff. I, I know, Matt, going into this, you were very worried for like the kid in the front row wearing John Cena up and down. <laughs> there was oh a God. kid in the front row with the full John Cena gear with, with the red McDonald's t-shirt and the wristbands and the hat and everything. And I'm like, that kid's going to get it. Gonna get it. <laughs> um, what are you doing here? There were a lot of kids at that show. There were, there were a lot. I, I think generally, I, I read a report where it said it sounded like like a lot of the people there. Were, it was their first Ring of Honor show, um, mm. so I think it was a lot of this was a wrestling show. They were coming out for a wrestling show, you know. And of course, they probably get on the local TV down there in Wheeling and everything too. Um, but there was a lot of just uh, everyone wants to see some good wrestling. This, this is see some familiar faces that I know come up to some of the Pittsburgh ones. But again, and, and pretty well done. An art, a recap I was reading uh, said they talked to one of the workers and said um it was it was a a a better turnout than they expected for wheeling um they had about three rows around the uh, ring again cordoned off one one end and this is like a pretty good sized arena 
You know, it's not huge. I mean, it's a, um, I don't even know. What are, what are the, it's your typical, you know, it, it's a hockey arena. The West Bank arena is a hockey arena. It looks like it's about, I don't want, I, I don't want to say it, it. It probably goes like seven or 8,000 seats. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I mean, yeah, like you said, they, they, they were only seating one half of the bleachers and then had all the seats around the, around the ring and it, it looked good. It was a nice, the crowd looked good. I don't know how exactly how many people were there, but it looked really nice. The crowd was there and they, they were loud. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was a really nice turnout sort. Yeah, really nice. Um, I think it came off real well uh, and everybody seemed to enjoy it. Um, uh, should we talk I, I, about some of the individual matches, or are you afraid we're going to spoil? I don't want to spoil anything for people. Well, not, not um, in general. Uh, I'm not worried about the internet, guys. Uh, I mean, of course, the big <laughs> matches of the night uh, we could talk about. Uh, you know, Seidel and and uh, Styles. Am I mistaken? Is this it? Was this the first match back for Seidel? This is yeah, the first match back for Matt oh, Seidel. Okay. I don't know if they're doing. I don't know how. I, I Ring of Honor is kind of weird with this. I don't know if Seidel is going to be like a regular. I'm assuming that he will be. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I'm not sure if this was a one-time thing or not. It may be because they don't have him advertised for anything further. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Uh, but could, it could quite possibly be. And, and I'm sure he's going to be on other events in the meantime before he this debuts. Because again, this is four episodes. I don't even know when the first of these. Usually, a couple weeks before the first episode comes up. Uh, so you're going to see this in like within two months, maybe. Um, mm-hmm. It's going to be tremendous. You guys are going to love this. I, I, I'm sitting there thinking, like, like you know, when's the last time I saw Evan Board wrestle? And I can't remember. And uh, but then I, of course, I watched Countdown, and they did they did show a couple spots of him jumping off a ladder and stuff. It's like, oh, there's the Evan Bourne I remember. This is. And, and Matt, let me know if you had this this feel too. Um, I don't remember him ever having a match like this in WWE. Like this was a different side of this. Is like, oh, hey, look, this is the thing they didn't get let me do for the last several years. You know? Yeah, uh, I can't remember them him ever having a match that was that long in WWE and just, certainly and just not. having a chance. And it, it it felt like even though like Styles is obviously a huge star, um, the match itself felt like it was like a real showcase for Seidel to really show what he could do and show that he's obviously he's all the way back from uh, the injuries and other uh, stuff that he might have been dealing with. I, I think the thing that um, struck me about Styles was that um, you know you know we all remember all the crazy stuff he's done back in TNA and and whatnot, but the just how efficient he is in the ring as far as movement, the economy of movement with him now. Mm-hmm. where he's really learned that less is more kind of style as he's gotten older and as he's matured. Um, so while the, while the match is great, obviously, um, that, that Styles' in-ring approach has, has changed a lot uh, for when he was kind of like uh, at the what we might think of as his peak back in uh, TNA. Um, and it's interesting to see him kind of like, to, to see someone like him mature. And obviously, I mean, it's awesome that he's getting a chance to, kind of like break out i mean he's probably bigger it seems like he's bigger now than he was for the last few years when he was in tna you know mm-hmm. between new japan and, and doing this stuff for ring of honor and i, I and I, I think i mentioned this to you too sort while we were at the show i said you know this might be the only chance i ever see aj styles live in in, in, in front of me because you know he was just kept under glass in tna for so long and now he's doing stuff in Japan and whatnot. I mean, just, you know, you just don't know when he's going to come back around our part of the country. And even like, I've seen him in TNA. I've seen him at a TNA taping, um, come down the steps and stare at the ring. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. it's not as exciting as, as when you see him at a show like this, when he's really going to town with something like this. Um, I'm blessed because I got to see him for a second time at, with this. Cause I got to see him have a tremendous match, not, quite as good as this i think this definitely takes the cake in the comparison uh but a tremendous match with anthony niece um who's a big name he was in tna for a minute um uh but doing great things on the indies as well uh, he's like the next guy that's going to come up as one of these aj styles kind of guys you know um uh tear down the house up in meanville uh, i mean and i haven't seen a bad match from aj styles this year you know and it's uh really cool to see him kind of have that buzz again you know, he's absolutely on a roll. And uh, the other match that I really think we have to mention is um, Adam Cole and Cedric Alexander. Mm. Um, and a lot of people know about Adam Cole these days, but I knew absolutely nothing about Cedric Alexander. I would not have been able to pick him out on the street. Yeah, It yeah. was my first time ever seeing him, and I was blown away. Couldn't believe um, the match those two guys had. 
uh, one issue I always have with Ring of Honor, and I got I actually got a comment in the chat room I want to get to about AJ in a moment. Um, um, a lot of times I'll go to these shows after I haven't been there for a while, and a lot of guys kind of look the same to me. Like there's a lot of new like new faces right. I saw, and I really cannot hear you know, if I've caught up onto the show after a while. They just have a lot of lookalike style guys. And Cedric and help me out, maybe you know the other one, Eamon. Uh, he, but they were always in matches together. Not ACH, I know that one. Uh, uh, Caprice Coleman. Caprice uh, Coleman. They, they used to be a tag team. They used to be, a t- they were a tag team, and I think they, they faced each other a couple times. But again, it was like, you know, you know, there was like the, the two black guys. I can never remember their names, you know, but they're, I I don't know who they are. And, I can't tell them apart, good. but I know they're in freaking fairness, awesome in, in the ring. Not, not, not saying anything of Ring of Honor, but there was a period of time where they had basically four athletic black guys and they keep rest, kept wrestling each other on like every show. It's and they like, both it's like, an, with each other. it's like a really awesome form of segregation in that case. You know, I mean, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, you want to put it that way. it's just like, okay, you know, um, uh, but, but no, cool to see them doing a lot of different things on this one. And I, yeah. you know, again, um, um, uh, definitely expressing different personalities, you know, they're growing from like, I'm a dude in the tights that do flippy moves, you know? Um, and I can't tell you apart by the flippy moves you do, you know, which is, you know, kind of a description, but, but, uh, but, uh, I want to get to more on, on the show. Uh, but our guest is still in the chat room, Mike McCormick. And he mentioned that, that interview he had with AJ, uh, AJ said in their interview, uh, with him that, uh, uh, he has changed the style because you only have so many bumps on your bump card and he's realized that he needs to utilize those more, you know, a little more smartly. Um, yeah. And you see that with everybody. We talked about that on the mayhem show, like, you know, Samoa Joe obviously is different than he was, you know, five years ago when he's doing crazy stuff in the X division uh, with Kurt Angle and, and, and AJ Styles or, you know, ring of honor before that. I mean, all these guys have to adapt. Daniel, Daniel Bryan was adapting before he got hurt and he's going to adapt even more when he comes back. He has to. You know, you can't, it's, it, a, it's a lesson that all these guys have to learn. I mean, when I uh, got to talk to Kurt Angle uh, about a month or so ago, and he was talking about the same thing about how, you know, he, he, he tells the younger guys, look, you can't, you know, but at the same time, he said, you can't lecture, you know, younger wrestlers no. and tell them, hey, look, you can't do giant flippy stuff forever. Yeah. Everyone yeah. has to figure it out for themselves. And you just hope that they figure it out sooner. Rather than I, I heard a story of a guy that went to one of the recent, uh, I think it was earlier this year, maybe last year. Uh, uh, Paul London was doing some seminars around the area, like here and up in Cleveland. Um, mm-hmm. And, and, and he said like, you know, he's really disappointed. And it's like, well, I, it's Paul London. He had some great stuff. Why are you disappointed? And it's like, well, I didn't learn a, anything cool. Like, like a flip off the top rope or anything. It's just like, that's not the point. <laughs> I, I don't yeah. think, I think that's, it's not really sort of a thing you would learn from a wrestler. Like that's something you would you would sort of adapt on your own. Yeah, yeah. Personally, I don't. I mean, I don't. I've never been inside a wrestling ring, so I mean, who am I to say? But, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I would love just to listen to Paul London talk about like the psychology of wrestling for however long the seminar is. You know, just like as a fan you know i mean I, I don't know how much stuff i glommed off of uh listening to corderas talk for two hours about refereeing of all things right uh yeah. it was a whole new appreciation for it after that experience you know uh it's just like oh okay that's why okay that that makes sense doing that and now you know when we talked about like the ultimate warrior match earlier it's like now i'm watching referees and see what they do i'm comparing <laughs> the guys in wwe rings versus uh guys in the indie rings that you know i'm trying to you know make sure you know are working around what I need to get and vice versa. Right. And we're not in their way. I'm, you know, as much as I can, you know, um, and I really appreciate the ones that do, you know, and ones we've talked about on the show, um, that, that do know what they're doing out there. Um, but, but anyways, back to the show. Uh, I know Matt, you've, you've got to experience in person. Um, the, uh, uh, what I like to call the classic ring of honor experience. Um, <laughs> the, the, uh, false finish, extravaganza that is some of those <laughs> matches uh, oh, yeah. i'm curious how about many, how many policies there are different I, it is it's one thing watching on video and that's why i'm so prone to i would rather go to a show than buy a dvd or what a, a pay-per-view or something maybe that's why i don't maybe, maybe that's why it's not it's not like going you know going and watching a wrestlemania or something for me uh-huh. uh because it's like that live experience maybe it's because my first experience was like hammerstein ballroom in a four-way between nigel brian and uh claudio I mean, and some guy named seth rollins now um so like 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 and feeling that energy you know much like i like going to uh i'll, I'll go to a guar show any day but i won't buy an album right because right. you're there and, for that and, experience 
And, and quick question, just to speak to sort of like the live experience stuff. Do you know, like, sort of an estimate how long the show actually was? Because I know Ring of Honor shows. In, the last time I went to a Ring of Honor show was WrestleMania weekend. Yeah. And it, it was over four hours. Um, <laughs> and, and it, I don't know if it was just one of their bigger events or. Yeah. And, well, and we've had one where they taped six episodes in the very, very cold roster over ice gardens in the middle of like January. Um, yeah. And that we were out of there after midnight. Uh, we probably got out of there probably before midnight or 11 or maybe 11 30 ish. Uh, they did yeah, four it episodes. A, it was a solid four hours. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't bad. It wasn't too bad. Um, kind of rough that they filmed three episodes and then gave us an intermission, uh, <laughs> you know, but I, I, yeah, I just always wonder is, you know, I, maybe it was because the show I went to was their super card of honor show, whatever. I, it was, it was good, but all the rest of it was good, but it was very taxing. Yeah, it is. Just because there was like so many, like, let's bust. Them. There's not like a filler match. There's not like, you know, <laughs> let's, let's have the call, crowd cool, cool down. Like, you know, no. Well, thankfully, busting out everything. during a taping I, like this, like you do have in ring segments, you do have cheeseburger. That's uh, true. You know, stuff like that. But, but Matt, what did, what did you think about that live experience that I was speaking of? I thought they did a good job of kind of, like you were mentioning, I think they did a good, good job where it was not, you know, it, it was not, you know, a, a five-star match after a five-star match after a five-star match. Because even that would get boring after a while. Yeah. But yeah, you got Cheeseburger and you had, it, it, there were matches you could tell were it seems like it seems prestigious. Like it's yeah, it seems like the TV tapings are a bit easier to digest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, mm-hmm. they had some in-ring, a little in-ring talky segments. The, the the Honor Rumble was a very nice way to eat time and and not have to you know sit through a, a huge uh, a huge uh, parade of false finishes. <laughs> <laughs> I and, and just going back to that story, I I, I love it. I, I mean, I, I I don't know if you remember um back um my first IWC show I got to go to and see in person. And Eamon, I know you'll which, like which, this because mm-hmm. one of the reasons I went to see that show was because ACH was going to be on the card. Mm-hmm. And I went up, like I got to see ACH and he and Shane Strickland had me like just going crazy by the end of this match at Super Indy. And uh, there was a couple matches at this Ringer of Honor show and I'm doing the same thing. I'm just coming up. I'm like, that's it. That's it. No, it's not. it. I can't believe it. <laughs> that's the whole point of being at that show. And it's just, it's awesome that you can still go. And after you, if you're as old as I am, you feel like you've seen so much, but they could still, those those two guys in the ring could still get you and and make you react the way they want you to react. It's Mm -hmm. just amazing. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I, I looked up some uh, results to do the count. We we experienced 11 matches, including the Battle Royal, um, and at least two in-ring segments, maybe three. So wow. it's a, it's not your and again, you, you think about the pacing of like I'm used to my wrestling shows or a good night is like four intermission and, and then three, you know, um, as a well paced in my eyes on my side of things, uh, a wrestling show, you know, uh, which is you know something like a super indie that we go like 11 to 14, you know, but but again, the pacing's different on something like that, um, but still better pacing than a night at Raw. Cause uh, yes, <laughs> for, for some reason it was, it was not as taxing. No, no, <laughs> I don't only, know why. The only thing that bugs me is the downtime in between matches. Like it seems like they take forever to set up for the next entrance or something. Yeah. It, but I, I mean, it, it had that deliberate pace where mm-hmm. once you were used to, okay, the match is going to end. Like I even like knew I could run to the concession stand. I'm like, this match is over. I know I've got a solid like minute, two minute, three minutes to run and grab something and I'm going to get back and I'm not going to miss anything. Um, because you got accustomed to um, based on the match. Um, what did you think, um, Sorg, what did you think of uh, the decade? Because hmm. I, I was not like just watching a little bit on Ring of Honor on TV. I wasn't that into it. Mm-hmm. But seeing it live, that was kind of the most interesting, like the like, story wise, that was the thing that kind of that kind of uh, drew me in the most. I, I thought that the stuff they were doing was really interesting. What do you think? Um, to me, I always feel like the factions in Ring of Honor kind of fall short. To mm. me, like they're <laughs> like to me, Kingdom um really feels like they want they're taken off of Triple H a little bit. Um, yeah, and, and Kingdom's kind of thrown together in a sense from what i can tell yeah it's just like, like it, here's it a name like, it's like adam cole and mike bennett they're both heels just like i never really got the embassy you know um yeah, 
Police Gambit had sort of a story though, where it was the it was the concept of you know Prince Nana was uh, in the sense owning these people to contracts. Plus, plus I, I I kind of uh, showed up in the second coming of the embassy where it was like Necro Butcher turned and yeah, it was kind of odd. Um, I I don't know, just factions are are not Ring of Honor's strong suit to me. Mm-hmm. Um, but they keep doing it, you know. But they do it; they seem to do it more than anybody else. Um, but I don't know. I, it was iffy. It was like, I, I, again, I don't know stories going into it. I liked what they played with uh, a little bit of dissension between uh, uh, Bennett and Cole between you know the title picture. I won't. That get was too, interesting. Yeah. It, 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 like there, there was enough there. That's all I always like when you're sitting there wa- sitting through how many TV tapings. There's a chance for you to like, oh, this like there's enough to set up the story. You know, uh, right. we talked about this in the in, in previous weeks about like, you know, storylines across indie shows, because does it make sense? Are we leaving enough for people? That's their first time, only time. And, you know, uh, what what brings people to string along to keep coming back to shows? Um, and I think that's, that's why I enjoy the TV tapings. One is like pff, I'm caught up on four weeks of uh, ROH now. I don't feel so guilty about not watching it. You know, <laughs> it's it, for it me. gets you into it, too, because, you know, you're going to get some progression you know you're going to see something that matters you're not just going to get like match 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 yeah, yeah. You, you're at a tv taping you know you're going to see some at least a little bit of storyline um which is comforting uh mccormick in the chat is saying is saying uh he disagrees age of the fall was brilliant i i, I confess i was not I, have I mean, not Ring, of Honor, Ring of Honor has a history with i mean yeah history. yeah I, I have not experienced like like uh, my deep knowledge of ring of honor unfortunately is like since hd net and don't get me started on the HD net tapings because, oh, my God, because, I mean, again, after going to a show, then I saw how flat the HD net show was. And then even going to an HD net taping in Philadelphia and knowing how that feels in person, even like it just blew my mind. They couldn't convey it on television. I love the show that, that, that they do now. Um, yes, it's lower budget. Yes, it's more raw. Um, I might have been really iffy on some of the production values at the beginning, but they've definitely cleaned that up a bit um, for something that is national you know mm-hmm. um but uh but yes they have better cameras than me at least uh, <laughs> uh they've got a boom crane too they so. got a boom crane i'm freaking jealous of the boom crane i want to <laughs> i want to wheel in lights to every <laughs> indie show i do now and put up a curtain on one of the end of the stupid gymnasium um <laughs> but, like i was like i love that tactic uh yeah. but uh but no they, they you know it's more raw they they get the feeling it, it when you watch that program, it does feel like a Ring of Honor show. The closest I think you can get, you know, um, it doesn't feel so bland like like the HD Net tapings. I, I feel were um, for my time. I had HD Net. I kept the big package so I could keep watching Ring of Honor because I'm like, finally, I can experience this <laughs> on a regular basis. And I'm just like, sad, sad. Yeah, I've, I've always, I've said this before, and I'm, I, I kind of eat my words a little bit now because I did enjoy a lot of what I saw at the Ring of Honor show, but. I, I said before that the hardest part about getting into Ring of Honor now is fighting this feeling that you've already missed the best of Ring of Honor because it happened years yeah. ago. Yes. Um, you know, but, but after going to that to the show this past weekend, I'm like, you know what? There are, there are a lot of guys who deserve. You know, um, but I I did feel like we got a, a second coming a bit um, because uh, from the HD nets, you know, I, I, again, I'm, you know, McCormick's going on about uh, uh, you know we got Great Jacobs versus uh, Black in a Cage match for. Uh, Age of the Fallen stuff. Um, I, and, and ROH, they're a super indie knowledge at number three. No, I, I think they're number three by default, unfortunately, at this point. Um, but, I mean, they're still they're doing something, right? Uh, I feel like we did get a second coming because I, uh, in my experience, I, I got to see some great stuff with like Steve Carino and Cole Cabana, uh, again, from the HD net tapings. Um, and and that was, that was still, I rewatched it again when it was on TV six weeks later. And it was tremendous. Um, and we're getting uh, uh, the Kevin Steen thing that happened over the last couple of years was good. Uh, him and El Generico Ladder Wars. I, I bought that DVD. It's it's tremendous. I've I've, I've been watching these Sami Zayn matches. I was like I gotta watch that DVD again. You know, <laughs> um, and, like, there's enough there. You know, and and I don't know, Matt. You 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 were looking at the best of DVDs with me, and it's just like, man, this is a who's who. You know. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like I I was this close to picking up Summer of Punk, and I think I still might order it online. You know, because I have not experienced that. Friends of ours, like like LB on on, on the Mayhem show, are like 
he experienced, you know, at least was following Ring of Honor when the, he was the one telling us about Samoa Joe, telling us about CM Punk, telling us about AJ Styles, you know, before we even experienced it on our local indies here, you know. Um, and and, it, and, it, and it, it sucks because it's one thing to watch it on a DVD and you can certainly appreciate it when you watch it on a DVD, but you can't replicate the feeling of, of, of like watching one match during the summer of punk and then having to sit and, and just, and just think about it, you know, until the next match comes along and then getting that next chapter, mm-hmm. you know, that's all part of the experience of watching you know, professional wrestling. You could show Eamon, this is not a slight, but you could show <laughs> Eamon all these rods from, you know, the mid to late nineties and, and show him Austin McMahon, but you can't recreate the feeling of, of just, watching it on Monday and then talking about it for a whole week and then coming back mm-hmm. around again, you know, that's, that's something that you can't replicate. So to all those guys who are cool enough and smart enough to get on the ROH train early, then, you know, good for you. Yeah. Yeah. But I think they're definitely, at, and they're in a good position and, and yes, Rick and Vars had problems. Um, but there's definitely, there's definitely cool enough stuff going on there for you to get on board, especially if it's, it's an alternative. It's like you get on it. If you just want a little bit of variety from what you're seeing on the other two, or really sick of the one. Um, yeah. Which one do I mean? You don't know. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, it, it, it is an alternative. It's never going to be your mainstream. It is a super indie, but it is like kind of the best of the super indie, you know? Um, so, uh, but I like it. And, and I'm, I'm glad to see that, that uh, I think you see, your wife is not, did not watch TV of this going into it. Right. See, I, I was just about to mention that, that my, well, we did take our wives with us because, you know, date night, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, my wife knew nothing about Ring of Honor and I was just, I was just delighting in the thought because I, I knew there was going to be some wild stuff. I could not wait for her to see the Briscoes. That was the one thing I, I, I was so looking forward to because <laughs> she had just no clue what was coming. And uh, I think we were actually talking about it um, earlier tonight. And, uh, and I just kind of like, I was like, so w- what'd you think of the briscoes? And she's like, Oh, I like the briscoes. <laughs> <And> she, <laughs> she's just cackling whenever, um, they're doing like the Kung Fu. <laughs> God, they're fun. Um, uh, a, a favorite of the night is the, uh, little girl wearing pink behind us with a big pink, my first ROH show sign. And at yeah. a certain point during the, uh, Mark Briscoe match chanting man up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the sound of the children during that so many kids Cole, the, the sound of the children during the Cole Alexander match towards the end, the volume of the shrieking coming from the crowd, bloody murder from some of these kids on anything I could imagine. The two boys in the next section over. Did you see them standing up and just <laughs> ah, during those children, first few matches? These children wanted blood. <laughs> But it was awesome. I, I I can't wait to watch because I want to hear that sound again. Because just the end of that match, I, I couldn't even hear myself thinking. I'm just always hearing these. You know, it's like, uh, it was like kids. What my wife says, like, I, I could have done without the kids shrieking like directly behind us. I'm like, are you <laughs> kidding me? That was the greatest part of the show. Uh, uh, Mike again in the chat room is asking our thoughts on Adam Cole. We, was, we spoke a little bit about Kingdom. Man, I've been on the Adam Cole bandwagon since the one time. He, well, he's been on there a couple of times, but the first time he was at IWC um, and I like you can kind of tell you got a camera on a guy and he reacts to it and it's like, oh, that guy, that guy's going to do something, right? Um, but uh, dude, I love it every time I see him out there. Um, uh, the best thing about Adam Cole is that he's still so young yeah and, yeah know, he's just got so much room to grow so much time to get better um yeah like you said sorg you can tell if that you, he's got something if you're mad he's I not like, in, I, know, I like i liked bennett too yeah um, bennett is growing on me and he's not been a guy that i've been a fan of but yeah um but no great show awesome stuff uh you know they're not they are but they're not suffering from the guys that have left them for next team you know what I mean? There's always new awesome guys. And they're finding them. Oh, uh, honorable mention to Chris LaRusso in the dark match. Um, you like that how they just start with a match like 15 minutes before the actual show? <laughs> it was like out of nowhere. Like, like, <laughs> like the guy, they didn't even like the ring announcer didn't even come out and be like, Are you ready, fans? No, no. Go. Ring announcer just got in the ring and says, Now person in the ring. I just fall in contest. <laughs> One fall, <laughs> here we go. 
Um, but uh, he's a, he's a local guy here in Pittsburgh doing some stuff with. Um, I know he's uh, doing Black Diamond. That was actually doing a show the next day. Oh, where did I put the flyer? I want to give them a shout out because uh, Black Diamond Wrestling was pressing hard on this show. I hear people in the crowd talking about Black Diamond. I'm sure they people that went and stuff. Um, I you know I I'm hoping they had a really good turnout the next day. It was like across the street. There's an awesome picture on their site of this is the place where ROH is. Here's an arrow at the point the place across the street we're gonna be. And and, and they've been doing. Uh, actually some live free streaming on youtube um so they were like i'm like they hand me the flyer and i'm like uh oh of course our our friend from uh, headlocks for breakfast ran into him uh that we talked to or that was on the wrestling man show a few weeks ago um but i'm like ah man i'm in pittsburgh i love to but you know i've been wanting to check you guys out you know i know some guys down there and he's like oh well dude we're on youtube it's like oh wow good good freaking hook dude <laughs> but yeah they were pressing here's it you gotta understand, here's what you gotta understand if you're gonna go to a wrestling show with sorg you have to understand that you're going with someone who's gonna get like stopped every five minutes by someone else <laughs> hey sorg rock star treatment yeah i guess so i, I guess. was in awe <laughs> Um, but no, no, cool. See them doing that. Um, um, and he's also involved with, uh, uh, PWX, uh, VOW here locally. I, I know. Uh, so good to see him doing that. I hear, I hear, uh, it sounds like ring of honor is pretty big on him. So like, I hope, I hope to see him, uh, showing up on one of these future of honor shows or something that they've been doing lately, which is kind of like their NXT ish thing that they've been doing with some, some startups. So, um, you know, I, I've been hearing a few guys getting some looks from ring of honor. It's, it's good to see them coming up. I mean, we've seen, uh, we've seen guys like Dalton Castle, or Ray Rowe. I was uh, pleased when he first popped up, you know, in ring of honor. Um, so again, it's kind of a, our guys, <laughs> yeah. like we talked about earlier. So, it's the kind of place where you find your guys. So yeah. Cool. And that's the thing. I was like, like if you're ring of honor, you find your guys there, then you're like, all like, 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 Everybody freaking out. Kevin Steen is coming. Like, what? Kevin Steen's coming. Prince Devitt's coming. I don't even know who Prince Devitt is, but Amos excited, so I'm excited. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like I get. I see, I see like a fraction of uh, of Devitt stuff from New Japan, and I was jacked whenever I heard he's coming there. <laughs> <laughs> and like, yeah, like you said, I mean, it doesn't it, it's, it doesn't take much for you to get attached to somebody. You saw no. like the second ACH came out on that show on Saturday. Night. I was all jammed up. I was like, yeah, here comes my boy. You know. Mm-hmm. And the streamers, I know you got some great pictures. I showed them a little bit earlier of the streamers you got. Oh, yeah. So, awesome. So, uh, check that out. It'll be on your TV here in the next few weeks. Eamon, uh, what's coming up in the indies? Sounds like some- there's, a, there's a few things coming up in the indies. Oh, Actually, yeah, a lot of really good stuff is happening this weekend. Uh, quick cheat plug. I'll plug this up that's happening uh, specifically for me this weekend. Uh, uh, we mentioned, obviously, working for Inspire Pro Wrestling. Uh, we have a, our event coming up this weekend, October 5th, back at the Marquesa Hall and Theater. And it's probably one of the biggest events we've ever put on. Uh, and one of the boldest events we've ever put on. Uh, that's because uh, this is our event in conjunction with Chikara Pro Wrestling, uh, our big Battle Wars event. Uh, stack lineup, uh, some really, really talented, talented people uh, on this show, including Bryce Rundberg, who, who we had on last week's uh, Indie Mayhem show. Definitely go check out that interview. Um, but we've got Colony coming in. We've got Icarus, Dasher Hatfield, um, mixing it up with some of the Inspire Pro guys. Uh, and some really, really cool stuff. We, we're, you know, this this is a card where I sort of look at it and it's like, wow, I'm working with all these talented people. It, it, it's really kind of crazy. Uh, um, even uh, speaking of crazy, the main event uh, for that show, uh, sort of veering away from the whole Chikara thing, uh, Scott Summers is taking on Teddy Hart. It probably will be the most insane, unpredictable, what the hell is going to happen kind of match. Um, I can't wait for that. Uh, I'm excited to meet Teddy Hart's cat. Um, <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, I, I keep to, I'm surprised a lot of people know about this. But yeah, Teddy Hart is time away from you know, wrestling trains. Uh, Persian cats, uh, specifically his his one uh, pet project, no pun intended, uh, Mr. Money, who can do moonsaults off the top turn bar. Wait, wait, wait. So he like actually brings the cat to the ring? He has as of, as of recent. He actually uh, was at King of Trios just like watching the show apparently. Oh, you better it. sell the hell out of that cat, dude. I want to yeah. hear this. I I am. <laughs> uh, can I pre-order on Smart Mark for this one? Because absolutely, I I I. I I, I, my dream is to call a, 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 well, at least one match with Mr. Money. That, that's all I care about. Um, but no, that's going to be absolutely. <laughs> as, as Eamon retires on the show here next week. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I, what do I have to do after calling 
uh, a wrestling match with a trained Persian cat. <laughs> is um, but yeah, that's going to be our show. It's going to be awesome. We are probably there's a good chance that we're going to have to turn people away from the way it's looking. Uh, we've already we sold out front row in like two days of it going on sale, and we're still you know tickets are still going for GA. You can still pick them up, pick them up, at inspireprowrestling.com. Uh, but you know I, if you're wanting to get to the show, I would get them online first to ensure that you will get a secured spot because uh, I I want to you know make sure that everybody gets there, and everyone can see the show. Um, so definitely go check that out, uh, inspireprowrestling.com. Uh, it's the company I work for. It's the company I love. Uh, so, you know, I'm excited for that this weekend. Uh, that's going to be absolutely insane. There's also an event, I believe, I, uh, if things work out, I will be going to the night before uh, in Bedford, Texas, that I want to mention. Uh, and that is for a company called Metroplex Wrestling uh, that runs out of the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex area, obviously with the name Metroplex Wrestling. They've got a lot of really cool uh, – I always hear really great stuff about them. Uh, they, they've got a different vibe when it comes to sort of – uh, sort of the Texas wrestling style. They're a bit more modern, I guess you could say. Uh, and and they, they've been doing some really cool stuff for a long time. So uh, I'm excited to actually go to their show for the first time ever. Oh, yeah. um, and and the, uh, if you are near the Dallas area and can't make it to Austin the next day, uh, the Colony will actually be competing on, uh, on the Metroplex Wrestling Show as well in a three-way tag team match for the tag team titles. Um, so definitely if you, you know, can't make it to Inspire Pro the next day, go to MPX so you can at least see the colony. Uh, it's, it should be some really fun stuff. We got a good lineup. Uh, if you can, uh, if you want to find out for more information, you can go to facebook.com slash MPX wrestling, uh, and go check them out. If you're in the Dallas Fort Worth area, uh, definitely go check out the show and, and I hope to see you there. I uh, if all goes as planned. Uh, there's also, uh, some stuff going on in the Midwest area that you should check out. Uh, Specifically, Friday, October 3rd, uh, in, Alt in Alton, Illinois, our good friends at St. Louis Anarchy are, are back with another event there, Mayhem and Matrimony event, uh, because uh, it's going to be a big night uh, for St. Louis Anarchy. There's going to be a wedding, Sorg. Oh. Uh, uh, based off of the stipulation uh, from uh, their last event, uh, Darren Corbin will be uh, uh, being the master of ceremonies for the marriage of uh, Angelus Lane and Brandon Espinosa. Uh, so there's going to be an indie wrestling wedding happening, and that should be some fun stuff. Uh, also, big night for—I mean, big night for Angelus Lane. Not only is she getting married, but she's challenging in the main event for the St. Louis Anarchy Championship in a two-out-three falls match against a friend of the show Gary J, which should be a great match. Uh, there's tons of really cool stuff on the card. Uh, Davey Vega taking on Michael Elgin. Uh, ACH will be facing Cedric Alexander, uh, who's making, uh -oh. who, 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 yeah, exactly, who's making his, his uh, St. Louis Anarchy debut. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly is facing JoJo Bravo. Uh, tons of really cool stuff on the card, uh, and, and some really great talent. St. Louis Anarchy is always bringing in top level guys uh, to their company. So if you want to go check them out, you can get tickets at slawrestling.com. Uh, and like I said, that's this Friday, October 3rd at the Knights of Columbus in Alton, Illinois. Alton, Illinois excuse me. Uh, hey, so, hey. Yes. Hey, man, I'm sorry to interrupt, but did you say that there was going to be a two out of three falls match between a man and a woman? Indeed, because that's, that's, the, that's the beautiful thing about indie wrestling. Um, uh, so, yeah. That, they shatter and, the barriers. Absolutely. And, and so and, we're virtually guaranteed that this woman is going to beat this guy at least one time. Could I mean, you know, I mean, if the two out of three falls matches, you know, cause wrestling, because <laughs> wrestling, I mean, um, you know, anything can happen. It, it, as, as the phrase says, anything can happen in, in professional wrestling. Um, but yeah, so definitely uh, go check them out. Uh, also, speaking of women in professional wrestling, AIW uh, this Saturday, October fourth, in Cleveland, Illinois, is holding their girls' night out events. Uh, they're Wait, doing Cleveland, things. Ohio. Cle Cleveland, Ohio. I think you me. said I, Illinois. I'm sorry. Did I say Illinois again? Oh, I apologize. <laughs> Whoops. Um, <laughs> I'm all over it tonight. Uh, but yeah, there's uh, some cool stuff happening there uh, in, in Cleveland, Ohio, uh, for their Girls Night Out tapings. Uh, a lot of really talented female wrestlers uh, on that show. Uh, uh, Athena, Allison K, Bea Scott, Mia Yim. Hey. Uh, uh, lots of really cool names that they're bringing in for the first time. Uh, Tessa Blanchard, who is actually the daughter of Tully Blanchard, uh, who's, who's doing some uh, stuff across the Indies. Uh, 
uh, I believe Mary Elizabeth Monroe, who I believe you've seen before. Yes. Sword, a couple uh, of times now. He's going to be on that show. Uh, and like I said, the taping for two of their, uh, two of their DVDs. So that's nice. definitely a, a great event to check out. AIW always produces some really good stuff. So that's at Turner's Hall Saturday, September 4th uh, in Cleveland, Ohio, uh, four o'clock for a girls night at 13 and seven o'clock for girls night, girls night out 14. So definitely go check them out there. Yes, uh, and and Sorg, I believe uh, there's some stuff going on with uh, Vicious Outcast Wrestling. Yes, as well. they got a big show this weekend. Of course, partners with us here at Sorgatron Media as far as their digital distribution, um, uh, headlined by a friend of the show, Facade, uh, taking on. Uh, hey, you just saw this guy uh, a little bit, Matt Tomosa Champa. Did I say oh, that man. right? I don't know. I never say I'm right. Uh, but holy crap, dude! <laughs> <laughs> um so so go check that out uh, by the way oh geez i can't remember a remix pro wrestling in the coming weeks uh i have a flyer for it somewhere you do too matt i think i put them both over there um he's actually taking on matt seidel uh, nice. f- facade versus uh matt seidel that's gonna be killer out there uh i understand remix does some pretty good shows so uh, go check that out uh Yes, uh, Mary Elizabeth Monroe. Yeah, she's been uh she's been a rosebud, I think, a lot lately. Um um on WWE, um, McCormick points out here. So, uh, oh, and also uh, Saturday, you kind of come to Lima to see Heather Owens fight a handful of guys in an effort to become the first War Respect champion. He's still <laughs> plugging in the chat room. I, I got to respect <laughs> this. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that happens in a lot in the Indies, Matt. <laughs> so, and it's I, interesting. You that? know what? We've we've come a long way, Sorg, and I'm happy to see it. I'm all, I'm all for it. I'm, I'm just two out of three falls. Have, uh, stunning. have you seen have you seen the bloody uh rachel summerlin and was that scott summers picks uh mm-hmm. on her facebook um they're they're pretty tremendous no, not not yet but man two out of three falls sorg <laughs> <laughs> if she wins it's not gonna be a cheapie i was gonna say you're I really mean, caught up on that on that stimulation you should see some you, you we need to get this guy some sarah del rey and uh cesaro matches <laughs> because um, wait they they have matches together yes chikara Claudio? Yeah. Yeah, they've been doing some really good stuff over there. This is as, they, this is uh, not a new uh, new idea. Of, they, they, so they don't I would call say, me mainstream Matt for nothing, sort of. Yeah, I'm living yeah. under a rock out here. I'm oh. still I'm still learning. Oh, we got I, a pro hey, man, we got a project here. We gotta expose this guy. Every day is a new day. I would encourage the whole Sarah Del Rey run in Chicago. You That's interviewed right. Cesaro. You don't know. You you would have you could have asked him about Sarah wrestling Sarah Del Rey. <laughs> Man, well, look, I got out of that alive sword. <laughs> awesome. All right. On that note, guys, let's get the heck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh hey awesome stuff uh quick plug iwcwrestling.com um they're having their 200th episode with retro reunion retro union later here in october um great articles going up by a friend of the show joe dabrowski um uh some there was some of the uh did you know this guy was in iwc stuff i didn't know robbie e was in there i didn't know who robbie echo was you know mm-hmm. i think i've seen him in person actually now i think about it um but uh, there's some really cool names in there. Uh, really cool, like, you know, uh, kind of in the style of what they're doing in WWE. is like, did you know this guy was in WCW or something like that? Um, they also uh, rank the in, uh, Super Indie Champions, or I'm sorry, Super Indie Tournament winners. Um, and that's another who's who of wrestling. Jerry Lynn, Cole Cabana, C- uh, not CM Punk, um, uh, Corey Graves, you know, guys like that. Uh, so go check that out. IWCWrestling.com. Got some great content going on there. Uh, and of course, they'll have some aftershocks coming up here shortly from this past show. Uh, great job with uh, 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 Plummer. <laughs> Justin, Justin, Justin Plummer. Oh, my God. <laughs> You know, the poor people that may only listen to this show don't know the context the show happens in. (laughs) Yeah, Cleveland, Illinois. Cleveland, Illinois. Illinois. Check it all out in Cleveland, (laughs) Illinois. You'll be lonely if you're the one that shows up. Um, All right, guys. Any Mayhem Show. Thanks a lot. Matt Carlins. He's got a bloggy blog. The indie fans won't like it, Sorg. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, Yeah, I'm... uh... Mainstreammat.blogspot.com. Come see me talk about wrestling that everybody watches. He takes on the the tough topics like how to wear multiple belts in professional <laughs> wrestling um, and the top uh, Paul Heyman moments. So go check that out. And he's at Mainstream Matt on the Twitters at Amen to Please. 
Inspire Pro Wrestling means today. Um, Battle, Battle Wars this Sunday. Plug it again. Battle <laughs> Wars. It Battle again. Wars. Chikara. Oh my God. There was there was there was a fan, uh, and I don't know why I'm bringing this up. There's a fan that uh, recently critiqued us of naming the event Battle Wars because <laughs> there's no such thing as a how can a thing be a battle and a war? <laughs> how can there be ants that wrestle? And you know, yeah, I mean, come on. I mean, you should just come back with, just <laughs> mention anything that happens in Chikara, and this is the thing. And say, <laughs> this is the world that we live in. Battle Wars is the event that you're coming to. Buy a ticket. Battle Wars. That's how you spin and it. Also, also, it sounds cool, so. It does sound cool. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why I got so defensive. What the hell? This must be, <laughs> AI, McCormick's telling me, AIW did a whole show last month with women versus men in cages. There is um, their, uh, their um, Battle of the Sexes. Yes, I've actually. seen pictures from the Gregory Irons versus Veda Scott. Um, also, pretty fam vicious. And you saw Veda Scott there at ringside there, Matt. Uh but that yes, Harley Quinn. Veda Scott is very delightful. Yes. Oh, yes. also, Ring of Honor. She did a fine uh, job. Also, uh, you guys saw R. D. Evans, obviously. Yes. So, uh, go check out. I think it's on Ring of Honor's YouTube channel, but it may be on a separate thing. Uh, people commenting on uh, ring, the, the people asked the Ring of Honor roster what they think of R. D. Evans. It's one of the funniest videos. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Oh yeah, we saw that. That was tremendous. Well, yeah. did you? Okay, good. good, good yeah, stuff. we 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 they, they they had a match where they. I don't know anything about the streak, but I loved everything I saw. Didn't understand much of it, but under, loved all of it. Uh, I'm sorry, I I'm still on this. Uh, I saw a tweet from uh, Gregory Iron talking about he had pictures they had to go get developed from his match with Veda Scott in the cage. Mm-hmm. He had to get them developed. Somebody else saw the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> he said it was like, it was the most awkward thing uh you know, just just imagine you know i mean yeah. it's, it's bloody veda scott in him you know um fun stuff indie wrestling <laughs> the indie wrestling <laughs> Oh my god, I gotta get out of here. Uh WrestlingMamshow.com. Good times at WrestlingMamshow.com. 412-206-WMS0 uh, for the hotline. Hit us up on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, YouTube, iHeartRadio. Check out the Wrestling Mayhem Show Super Feed on iTunes and Stitcher. Um, big ups to our friend Basic Pickups. Basic Sickness at BasicSickness.com for intro and outros. Um, and also you can join us here live and, and witness the madness yourself at 11 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 p.m. Central Time at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Did I get all of it? Anything to plug? We plugged the heck out of the last like half hour. Um, mm-hmm. and Tales from Indie Wrestling, Tales from the Indies, uh, where fine podcasts are sold. Uh, and we'll see you guys next week on the Indie Mayhem. Uh, support Indie Wrestling. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. for the taste of the poor. Sick, sick, sick. You know how I act now. If you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down. Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi, everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com. <laughs>